God gather in this place. I'm excited about Jesus. Mm. I'm excited about what he's getting ready to do in here. Mm. I'm excited. Oh, God. I'm excited. Run and tell somebody about Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We don't take for granted that we live in America. We don't take for granted that God has given us freedom. Amen. We don't take for granted that there are men and women who have given their lives, and even children who were murdered and slaughtered for the call and cause of justice. So on this Memorial Day, can we pause for a moment of silence as we recognize those who have sacrificed their lives that we might be free today? Amen. people of God say amen. amen. While we're silent, I do want to honor these people um, who are affiliated and associated with us, and certainly we honor God for all of God's people who serve. Sister Faith Dickey, Brother Anthony Myers, Brother Justin Everett, Dominique Sessions, Antonio Jones McDaniel, Carly Walker, Prince Gennard. We honor God for those who continue to fight those who continue to enlist and enroll and say yes. A mother got on Miracle Boulevard a few weeks ago whose son was displaced and not wanting to receive love. And she texted me this week to say he will be sworn in in the U.S. Army in Hallelujah. the next couple of weeks. And she said, hashtag Miracle Boulevard. Amen. Amen. At this time, let's give tribute as um, um, Elder Marvin Ross comes. Amen at this time. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so receive um, Minister Tequila Sanders with our scripture reading and then um, 
I will come back with our ongoing concerns and then prayer by Minister Tracy Joyner. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture will be covered from Genesis 4th chapter, verses 1 through 16. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought a firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and he and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thou countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked to, talk with Abel his brother, and it came to pass. When thy were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall be unto the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast given, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. And from thy face I shall be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any findings should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Amen. As I read our ongoing prayer concerns this morning, Apostle James Gathers and family, Reverend Charles Foreman, Ford Farmer and Lady Carolyn Farmer, who is with us this morning, we continue to pray for him. He's in ICU at Cape Fear. Sister Marla Dublin and the family in Georgia, in the passing of her mother, she is related to sister-in-law to Sister Karen Dublin. Bishop John McClurkin and First Lady Janice McClurkin and the church family and their family, they're my college pastors. Um, Bishop Sheldon McCarter of the Greater Cleveland Avenue Church family in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Mother Alice Lee, young sister Mahogany Taylor who was released from the hospital. Sister Ella Williams, Sister Doretha Merritt, Sister Crystal Stokes, Jim Ranieri of Campbell Facilities Management, Yolanda Quinn, Mother Carolyn Chancy, who I saw Friday and getting great reports from the doctor. Brother Paul Schillenberger, Elder Derek Bass, who's with us again this morning, and we're excited. Amen, amen. <laughs> Sister Josephine Atkinson, Brother Scotty Gathers, Brother Tommy Upchurch, young sister Olivia Bullock and her family, and she was scheduled to be released this week after being in the hospital since February. Amen, so continue to pray for her. <laughs> sister Mary Smith, Brother Bruce Fryson, Universal Healthcare Lillington, Brother Dion Davis, Sister Tanya Rich at home, Sister Lorraine Chandler, Sister Felicia Stancil, who's with us this morning, strong warrior. We honor God for you. Amen, woman of God. Amen. 
Sister Pam Satterwhite, who's going on her six weeks in ICU, but she's holding on. Amen. And we bless God for her. Sister Takesha McWilliams, Sister Thais Boyd, who's out and about. Deaconess Lorraine Middleton Ruffin, who's with us today. We honor God for that. Amen. Sister Cassandra Sykes in New York. Amen. And Sister Mary Johnston, who's the mother of Sister Valerie Frazier. We continue to pray for these people as they go throughout their day. I've given the list to the prayer team so that we can continue to make prayer because I believe prayer changes things. Amen. I trust that God does it. The Bible said the effectual fervent prayer. That means you can't just pray when you feel like it, but you got to pray till you feel it. Oh, my, my, my. Amen. Oh, the righteous availeth much. Amen. I've called out our armed service personnel as we honor them on this Memorial Day. To the G-Live family and the entire new G family, we thank God and we are yet praying for them. Pray for our children. This is the last week of school on this end, so pray. We got some that will still be in, but let's cover them. Amen. Pray that the children be wise. Amen. Pray that they don't make decisions that they later regret. Amen. Amen. Tell them that they use common sense. Amen. And Holy Ghost sense. Amen. Know that we cover them. Amen. We got to pray for them. Y'all cover them because sometimes our kids get scared and children are not expected to make decisions that parents make. That's why they're children. But we got to pray for wisdom. Amen. Pray for these children to find their identity. And I'm going to leave it with that statement right there. Amen. Amen. Their, their, godly, their godly identity. Not only pray that the children find their godly identity, but some of us need our godly Precious Father, we come to you right now, God, as humble as we know how, Father God. Lord, thanking you for this day, for this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for being a just and a righteous God, a holy God. We thank you for being the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Lord, we thank you for being a forgiving God. Lord, we ask right now, Father God, before we go any further, Father God, that if we did anything that is unpleasing in your sight, those things that are known and unknown, that you forgive us right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Father God, for saving us, Father God, for sanctifying us, God, and filling us with your precious Holy Ghost, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for having a place, Father God, that we can come up and lift up your holy name, Father God. Lord, we thank you for this being a place of healing, deliverance, and salvation, Father God. Lord, we thank you for this place where we have Miracle Boulevard, where we've seen the manifestation of your mighty works, Father God, where we've seen healing, Father God, where we've seen deliverance, Father God. Lord, we just want to say thank you, God, because you've been so good to us, Father God. If we had 10,000 tons, God, we couldn't praise you enough and thank you enough, God, because you've been just that good, Father God. Lord, Lord, and we just say thank you, God. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We come to you right now, Father God, with a sincere heart, Father God. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to touch everyone that's under the sound of my voice right now, Father God. You know what they are in need of, Father God. You know their heart's desires, Father God. Lord, we ask you right now, God, to just meet them where they're at, Father God. You have heard the names on the sick and the shut-in list, Father God. Lord, we ask you to have your way in their lives right now, Father God. Touch them, Father God, like no other, Father God. Heal right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. Speak to the doctors right now, Father God, when they can't find out what's going on, Father God. You speak to them, Father God. Lord, we thank you, God. And we thank you, God, for just being so good to us, being like no other, God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for our pastor, Father God, our apostle, Father God. Continue to lead her and guide her, Father God. And keep us humble that we can follow her as she follows you, Father God. We thank you and we just bless your name. And it's your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on and give the Lord praise in this place. 
Come on and give the Lord praise in this place. Come on and give the Lord praise in this place. Hallelujah. God is so worthy. Hallelujah. Anybody know we serve a good God? Come on, give God good God a good praise. Anybody grateful to be in the house today? Anybody grateful to be in the house today? Hallelujah. Real quickly, all over the building, if you would, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. If you have pain, if you have pain he's, a he's a pain taker. If you are lost, if you are lost he's, a he's a way maker. If you need freedom, freedom saving, save he's the prison, he's a prison shaking, savior. shaking savior. If you got chains, you got chains. he's a chain breaker. Anybody believe that today? Come on and give God a praise. We're going to introduce some new songs. I want to make sure you all hear the words, okay? Now, come on, come on. Let's get excited. Hallelujah. Y'all don't sound excited in here to me. Hallelujah. If you walk in the same old road for miles and miles If you're hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life Listen, if you got pain He's a pain taker if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, save him. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a shame breaker. Come on, y'all. Come on, let's make a noise in here. Come on, make a noise in this house. Make a noise in this house. Hey, we've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to the things that we know just ain't right. There's a better life. There's a better life. Yeah. Come on, y'all. He's a You are lost. You are lost. He's a way maker. He's a You need freedom. Come on. Oh, if you got chain, he's a chain. You got pain, yeah. He's a pain. You are lost. You are Lord, He's a way maker. You need freedom. Come on. You got chance. Come on. He's a shame break. Yeah, you got pain. You got pain. He's a pain. You are Lord. He's a way. your mouth and tell the Lord say yeah say yeah yeah yeah, yeah. say yeah. Yeah. yeah somebody testify testify somebody testify testify if you feel it you receive it you receive it you can feel it you can feel it 
chains broken but because of the situations the things that have bound us down it's caused us to have dry places and a lot of times we get the chain broke but then we're still left with dry places and we're still left with hard places stony places in our lives and so even though that seeds are being sown they have nowhere to take root because is falling on what they call fallow ground. So it has no place to take root today, but anybody want the Lord to reign on you today? No, 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 no. I'm talking about really, you really want the presence of God to rest on you. So I got a question. Who came today just because it's Sunday? Lift your hand. Who came today because somebody made you come? He said, I, he said I was telling the truth. Who really came expecting a move? I can't understand how people that expect to move come to a house of God and just sit on God. But you say you're sitting in a seat of expectation. What are you expecting him to do? I need a move this morning. Rain on my feet, 
Last time. Rain on my face. Come on and put those hands together. 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 Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. Here's, can somebody offer something to the Lord? Here's my, here's my, here's my cup. Here's my cup. Fill it up. Fill it up. And make me whole. Can y'all help me? Fill my cup, Lord. I While we're transitioning, amen, the choir can take the stand, amen, so we can make room for our guests, amen. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Anybody got a cup you need some filling in today? Amen, I need my cup filled. Hey, my my cake, come on. Hey, shake, God. I need my cup filled up. Amen. I need my cup filled. Hallelujah. I need it filled. Amen. 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 I need my cup. Amen. Amen. Come on at this time, Sister Nanny McLean is coming with our words of welcome. Can y'all put your hands together for awesome praise and worship? Amen. Rain on my field. Amen. I need my cup filled up. Amen. I'm stuck right there. I need to fill my cup. Amen. Amen. Let, let me give you a disclaimer. I'm not trying to make anybody shout. But I praise God today that I got a cup that needs to be filled. I need my cup filled. is laying in ICU. His wife could be up there with him, but she found a purpose to come here to church to give it to him. See, sometimes you can't, 
you, the excuses people will use to not come to church don't make no sense. When somebody who really has an excuse, I could be with my husband where he is, but right now I can't do nothing for him, but I can trust a God who is able to keep him. Hallelujah. Oh, my, 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 my. So we pray for her strength now. While we praising him here, the angels are praising him there. Hey, mama, mama, hey, mama, hey, mama, hey, mama, ah, la la bossa, amen. Press your way, press your way, hallelujah. Press your way, God our master, hey, mama, hey, mama, hallelujah. Get on a little bar for Pam. I need you to press for Pam. Oh, shot mama. Hey, come on. Hey, mama. 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 Hey, mama.
Hallelujah. Amen. I held a rouse. Get on Boulevard for Eva's sister friend, Pam. Amen. That lady been laying up in the hospital. Sometimes family don't even come see them. But God, I told you would give your sisters and brothers that will stick closer than anybody you think will. Amen. Amen. She go morning and night when she can. If she got to be to work at 7 o'clock, she don't go. But I'll call her at 11 o'clock. She get off her second job. Don't work eight hours. And say, I'm on 264 because I got to go see Pam. She said, my friend accepted Christ. She's all right. She said she's a little afraid because they're telling her that this is where she's going to be until she transitions. But honey, that girl has prayed that sister through. You can, you can do it. And she did what she had to do. Yeah. Amen. But we are trusting God. For every time the enemy said no, God can say a supernatural yes. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes we don't know what a phone call means to so just tell somebody I love you. Sitting at a restaurant yesterday, a man walked by and said, has anybody told you today they appreciate you? I said, today they have. But you can do it too. Amen. But this man makes it his business to tell somebody he run into, I, I love you. Today is an amazing day because God lives. So release it to God. You can't fix it. You can't handle it. Our bodies were never meant to deal with stress. But we can trust God and say, God, you work it out. Amen. It may not come out the way I wanted to come out. But God, I trust you to work it out the way you want to work it out. Because in my weakness, God's strength is made perfect. Hallelujah. So turn it to God now. Amen. You can cry that you've been holding on to that, but God said you released it now. Oh. <laughs> God. Yes, I do. I release everything to him. When he fills my cup, everything that's in my cup that ought not be in my cup, it comes out of my cup. So I want him to fill my cup with some stuff I need him to take out of my cup. Hallelujah. There's some bitterness I need him to sweeten up. Yes, sir. I need him to sweeten some things up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, and if y'all yeah, ain't something, I'm sick of cancer. I'm sick of diabetes. Sick of heart disease. I'm sick of depression. I'm sick of oppression. I'm sick of lack. I'm sick of unbelief. I need God to transition some stuff. So if I'm sick of all that stuff, then I'm going to praise him for my healing. Praise him for my deliverance. Praise him for my salvation. Praise him for the jailbreak. Praise him for the hospital break. Praise him for the nursing home break. Praise him. I praise him that everything, that everything, that have breath, praise the Lord. God got you here. Go ahead and praise him. My vision may not be 2020 yet, but it's a spiritual vision that's king and sharp. Oh my. Whoa. Whoa.
All right. I, I know we're going to move the service, but I need to be moved in the service. You told God we need to move. I need to move. <laughs> I fuss at my sons and daughters when they don't follow my instructions, but I can't fuss at myself. So I'm presiding, so I can't accuse nobody else of holding nothing up. But I need God to move. Y'all got some stuff in your life you need God to move on. Amen. Some situations he need to deal with. And when God put a signature on it. Blessings on my road. Say, say, Pastor, how you know that? Because the Bible said, give no place to the devil. Y'all need to study that. We can talk about what the devil doing. Why don't you spend more time talking about what God is doing? Versus what the devil is doing. So when you don't give the devil any place, that means give the devil no space. I don't even want to call your name out my mouth unless I'm saying you are rebuked, Tasha Mate. I rebuke you, Satan. But I'm giving God praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Every time you turn around, the devil taking me through something. Get on through it. Say, God is blessing me in spite of what I'm going through. Amen. And I'm going to live. When the doctor tell you differently, you look at him and say, I'm still going to live. Well, that means, you know, when they just had a funeral, not a, if you are born again, you ain't afraid to transition from here. You're still going to live. Eternal life means what it means. So don't get caught up on what's going on. Don't trip up. Well, that person died. The pastor was praying for a miracle. Maybe that miracle was on that side, not this side. But I'm going to live. Y'all going to keep doing exactly what you're doing. And I'm going to live. And I ain't heard of nobody in the presence of God ever come back. They don't want to come back and deal with what we deal with. But we trust the power of God. Do y'all feel better now? Welcome in. Come on, welcome. <laughs> welcome, Holy Spirit. Sit down and take a seat. Because the Bible said God inhabits the praises of his people. Y'all should already feel welcome.
Lord, tell you, while you were praising God, I saw God supernaturally healing your knees. Yeah, if you can praise him on that knee, and they talking about they need to operate.
Amen. Can we offer praise for God's goodness and mercy towards us? Amen. 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 I know the hour is spent. Amen. But we continue to give God praise. Thank him for the music ministry, for our ushers, sight and sound ministry, and all on your respective duties. We offer God praise. We thank God for being with us. Amen. And just before I go in the room, can you join me in putting our hands together and celebrating on today, Sister Maddie's birthday. The birthday later herself. Amen. 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 Put a smile on your face. Amen. Thank you, man. Amen. Amen. On this past week, our church mother, God bless her to reach the ripe age, can I tell it, of 79 years. We thank God for Mother Mary Holden. Amen. Wow. Wow. That's a blessing. Amen. Amen. And that's worthy to say something for today. Amen. Wow. Pray I look that good when I turn 79. Amen. I'm on my way. Yeah. Amen. I believe my better days are going to be better than my former days. I believe better days are here. Better days are here. Y'all should have got excited about that. You ought to believe there's better days ahead of your life. Man, I'm living my best days yet. Amen. Because I trust a mighty good God. Amen. All right. Amen. Y'all, let's go to Genesis chapter 4. Y'all pray with me. We're not going to be long, but there is a word from the Lord today. Amen. Amen. If you missed Bible study last week, you missed a blessing. Yes, sir. It's good to me. Amen. It's good when the preacher get it herself. Amen. The word of God was just good. Amen. So we're having Bible study on Wednesday. So school is about out. So for those who said the kids got to get ready for school, amen, we're going to keep having it right on through the summer. I'm, I'll break you a little bit in July, but not much. Amen. We're going to have some Bible study. Amen. Amen. And continue on with our lessons. Amen. We're still on accountability. You know why? We're going to stay there until people become accountable. And you're dealing with accountability if you're not going to be accountable. Amen. The Lord said this is a year of accountability, so people need to be accountable. Amen. So I'm not going to give me any amens this morning, but that's why I'm glad we praised them and shouted and ran around and did all we're going to do. Amen. But there is a word from the Lord. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Amen. I know how to behave. God, I thank God today for being here. Thank God for my husband, Deacon Rawls, upstairs. Amen. 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 I thank God for all of you, those who have come in since Reverend Gloria. We thank God for you. Apostle Clary, we thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Sister Mel, we thank God for you, too. Amen. All the way from Greater Heights. Amen. Church in Virginia. Amen. All right. Genesis chapter 4. Y'all with me? Amen. Amen. I heard some stuff in this. And we've had the, the, the preacher to read the scripture. Amen. So we're going to go right into the word. Amen. God, we thank you now. We continue to pray that the words of our mouth and meditation of our heart will be acceptable to you. Oh, Lord, you are strength and you are redeemer. Thank you for your presence and power being here. Now, God, let preaching become easy for this your maid servant. God, we don't take this opportunity for granted. I never take for granted an opportunity to speak to your people. God, we thank you. Now, help us, God, that we not just hear your word, but empower us to be doers of your word. God, we thank you in our name of Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. From the subject this morning, the danger of vain, selfish ambition. The danger of vain, selfish ambition. Amen. Y'all not going to shout on that one. Yeah. Amen. You, you would think that the, the one place where people ought to be free to be who they are ought to be in the church. And I found out it's some of the worst places to be. You find more stuff in the church than other places. Amen. But we thank God for fixing it today. The danger of vain, selfish ambition. Amen. You know, ambition is not a bad word. You ought to have goals. You ought to seek to, to see. But I found a definition that fit where I think I'm going today. And it was an ardent desire for rank, fame, or power. Ardent. That means you won't let it go. Now, you put everything you got into getting what you're trying to get. 
I mean, it's amazing that people will put everything they got into trying to be something, but yet they don't understand that if we would put that much energy in being a good Christian, if we put that much energy into being a good church member, we might be able to get somewhere. But we have the churches riddled by people who have a desire for rank, fame, or power. And it has no place in the church. Amen. We got to have God's power. Is that all right? Amen. And it's, 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 it's a danger to pursue your own goals at the risk of somebody else. And I believe God has given us in this season a holy boldness now that's going to allow us to cry out against injustice. Cry out against the things. This is Memorial Day. And we celebrate those who fought for our freedom. Amen. But we got to understand that our freedom hadn't been free. <laughs> Amen. We got to continue to move forward and understand the freedom to come into church and worship God and run, stand, do all. That's not a freedom that everybody has. Amen. Amen. And then the very things that make us free are the very things we try to hold people hostage for. Amen. Some sitting here this morning say, I wish they'd go ahead and do it. No, no, no. This is the house of the Lord. So if we stay here all day praising God, we're going to praise him. If y'all shout all morning, I'm still going to preach. You know, because at the end of the day, the shouting is good. Praise and worship is good. But you need the word of God. You got to get something you can take with you in order to have victory throughout your week. Amen. So I don't know about you, but this is my refueling station. I came to get what I need because I know this week I might have to go through some things. I might have to be confronted by some things. You might have to deal with some people trying to walk all over you as our children begin to end the school year. You're going to have to deal with some folks that don't want to do nothing. They don't want to see you achieve. They won't tell you're doing a good job. They really want what you got, but they've done what they do to defeat you. So you can't have what you need to have. But you better get those people out of your life. They don't want to see go nowhere and don't want to see you get nowhere. I decided I'm going somewhere. If no other pastor speak to me, I'm going to be what God has called me to be. Get upset, get mad, but I'm going to do what God said do. <sighs> Hallelujah. Amen. Stop walking over people trying to get what you want. Maybe you ain't been through nothing this week, so you don't have a reason to praise him. Now, you know, that don't even make no sense, did it? Because if you hadn't been through nothing, that would be enough for you to praise him. Imagine if everyone in the church became concerned about the well-being of other people. So many folk come to church, I won't mind. I want to get my deliverance. I ain't got time for yours. I made it. Amen. I ain't got time to hear about your struggle. But if people really would become concerned about what other people are going through, amen, then can you imagine the same time when you are focused on that, you ought to also be focused on what you are offering up to God. What are you returning back to God for his blessings? Amen. I'm not talking about money. Y'all get upset about that if you want to. I'm going to talk about money a little bit later. But for now, where's your time? Where's your talent? What excuses are you using for not doing what you know to do? Amen. I know I've been hurt in the church. I know I've been through some things in the church. But that's okay. You get past your hurt. You get past the things you've been through and realize that, God, you brought me to this place. You brought me to this point of my life. And so I thank you. Amen. We got to be focused on what we are giving to God. What are you offering to God? And don't be worried about what everybody else is offering. What are you offering? Don't be worried about what everybody else ain't doing. You can only account for what you're doing. Amen. Which steers me to my text. You with me, Brian? Because we got to get through these verses. The Bible demonstrates in our text that God is an equal opportunity employer. <laughs> when you become saved, we all are saved by the same belief in the power of Jesus to have been raised from the dead, that he is the son of God and is capable of forgiving us of our sins. You can't get saved unless you go by way of Romans 10. <laughs> and so he gave us all an opportunity. If any man be in Christ, you are a new 
And instead of us accepting the fact what God has done for us, we are too busy looking at what God is doing through somebody else or done for somebody else. Amen. You don't know what I went through in my life. The fact that God saved me is good enough for me. The fact that he saved you ought to be good enough for somebody else. And all of us had to get saved from something. So don't be afraid of your sin because God saved you from sin. Be excited that God would clean you up and give you an opportunity. He is an equal opportunity employer. <laughs> I love it. Amen. But be careful how we purport to return back to God what God has given to us. Y'all going to miss that one. Because I believe all of us fall short. God, you saved me. You blessed me. You brought me through some stuff. And then what do I do in return? Find nitpicky stuff and get mad about it. Do what I feel like doing when I feel like doing it. Who is the pastor? She's just a lady like I am. Uh-uh. Be careful. Now, I'm humble, but be careful. Amen. Because when God plays, you can't take people and just treat their anointing. Not just the pastor, even the rest of you. I can't treat your anointing like it doesn't mean anything. You're a child of God. I can't claim to have more kinship with you than the kinship and relationship that you have with God. Oh, God, y'all see where I'm going? We got to look at what, what are we doing in the area of sacrifice, including our time and our talent. What are you giving to God? Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I can admit this. I'm extreme in being busy. But there's some of us the extreme in not doing nothing. And if we would do something, then some of us who are extreme with being busy could be less busy. I get so busy I forget stuff. It used to be I didn't forget as much as I forget, but I'm getting a little older. So you tend to forget more things than you used to because you used to can remember stuff. I mean, I could tell you your name when you are. But all the, nowadays, I got to go back and pick, pick a paper up or look at the phone number and say, I know that number, but I don't know where that number coming from. Huh? And so, so we opt out. But I found out that the opt out of most folk ain't just for the church. In reality, your opt out is in every area of your life. When you start opting out on your relationship with God, you start opting out on your relationship with your family, you start opting out on your relationship with others, you even opt out on your job and in your community. And a whole lot of us are in opt out mode. Oh, ouch. We got our priorities messed up, and God wants to fix it. And so the enemy comes in to make us lose focus. Y'all don't stop shouting. All right, the first danger of selfish or vain ambition is you miss the rank of your gifting. Mm -hmm. Read verses 1 to 5 real quick. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain. Yeah, see, Adam was already in trouble. Saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. Mm -hmm. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and their fat and portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his I offering. was saved first. I was the firstborn. And then you took advantage of your firstborn relationship and allowed that relationship to then get you in trouble with God. I was anointed by God. I was called by God. I was gifted by God. God gave me intelligence, gave me a good position in life, and put me in a good place. But then we forget that, that, that all that we had came from God. Came firstborn, keeper of the ground, took the Lord the fruit of what he had given. But then also his brother took the firstborn of his flock and gave him the fatted portions. What is this saying to us? Don't give God what's left over. You got to give God your best. Amen. The first of everybody's week ought to be Sunday. If this is a place on Sunday morning, I don't care, not just new generation, but every church ought to be filled to the rim. Because I realize I can't exist during the course of my week except I come. And I'm glad we got G-Live. It's good. But everybody using G-Live ain't sick and shut in. 
Then when you get back, you wonder why I feel out of place because you out of the space. And so there's a danger with progressing because in, in one instance, we make it available to folk, but we also give people an excuse or a crutch to hold on to, and therefore you have given what you need to give to God because you let anything come and distract you from your purpose. Get mad if you want to, but tell the Lord, thank you. I believe there is the thing called apostolic order, and in order, you got to learn how to get your mess straight. Because stuff is not going together in your life because you got stuff out of order. They may seek ye first the reason. For Cain and his offering, he had no regard. Mm -hmm. So Cain became. Somebody tell you, don't let God reject what you're giving. Mm -hmm. Misrank your giving. You think what you're doing is important. Okay, can I play, explain that? You misrank it. I think that it, it don't take all of that. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do that. You misranking what you're doing. You ain't asked God yet, was he pleased with what you gave? You, you haven't had a conversation with God and say, God, God, does my life really please you? It's tight. Mm-hmm. You misrank your gifting. Amen, read, son. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. Uh-huh, he got mad and started it pout. <laughs> got wind in your jaw. Got a twist in your neck. Mm-hmm, folded up your arm. They come before me in court, I tell them, unfold your arms. You got no authority in here. Take your arms down. Amen. When the Lord finds you in your place, then you need to get it right. We don't teach this just to make you look bad. We just telling you it's time to get it right. Amen. I can keep you shouting all day. I could be hooping right now. But at the end of the day, I want you to live successfully. I want your life to be pleasing to God. Amen. I'm not even fussing now. I'm just saying, let's come on, look at what we're doing and what we're giving and make sure we're right. Come on. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. You see, you misrank your gifting. Watch this. The Lord said to Cain, mm -hmm. why are you angry? And why has your faith fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? So the Lord said, why are you looking like that? Why are you upset? All you had to do was the right thing. How many times have we promised we're going to do the right thing? and we still don't do it. Anything and everything can distract you from what you're trying to do. Hmm? Amen. See, 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 what you did? Look, I'm not ready. And if you do not do well. Wait a minute now, that's bad right there, read. Sin is crouching at the door. If you don't do well, then sin gonna get you. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, uh -huh. it's desire is for you, but you must rule over it. You got victory over sin. He said, so in other words, he was telling him, listen, Cain, don't you start comparing. There's a danger in comparison. The second danger you get to, what was the first danger you misrank your giving? The second danger is you deceive your own self. Ain't nobody deceived but you. There are people who fool themselves. Cause everybody else looking right through you. The proof is in what you do. Huh? I challenge the men, man up. But don't do it in talk. Man up in your walk. And a lot of us women got to man down. The men can't man up because you, man, you, you, you manning up. I won't eat on the program yesterday. Some of the men can't be men because we try to take over. Sit down. Be quiet. You always got the vision for the household. Let your husband dream. Let God give him something. I ain't got no husband, but God is your husband, man. You see God first. I'm almost finished. 
See, when you don't do well, sin is waiting to attach itself. This sin came upon him so strongly that the anger was kindled against him. And instead of doing what was right about his brother, it made him kill his brother. And a whole lot of, a lot of us are killing our sisters and brothers because we won't do right. And sin is waiting to attach itself. Tell you never detach the sin from you. You mean right and do right, God will do right. Read, son. Uh-huh. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel yeah. and killed him. <coughs> then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? Uh-huh. He said, I do not know. And okay. I'm, and then my, my what's brother's the first, What's the first sign of deceiving yourself? The first thing you begin to do is first you get angry and upset. You start fighting the wrong enemy. You fighting everything outside of you, and the first fight is within you. It's a good word. Preach, girl. Yes, sir. The second thing you do is you start to cover up. Ha! <laughs> and then you're gonna do one more thing. Y'all got y'all with me? You cover up, then the next thing you start doing is lie. And in the words of Elder Rue, a lie don't care who tell it. Start lying. Watch this word. Read. <laughs> and the Lord said, what have you done? What are you doing? And the first thing he came up with was a story. Come on. What did he say? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's go back, blood. Go back to verse 9, because that's better, even there. 9. Read 9 good. I want to hear that. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? All right, here come the lie. He said? He said, I do not know. I do not know. How many times have we said something and we know we were telling a lie? Do not know. And then he got smart with it. Does that sound like us? Am I my brother's keeper? And some of you are the same way. I don't know. And then said, what's she asking me for? Well, I learned a long time ago when the Holy Spirit spoke to me when I first began pastoring. It said, you can't make nobody do anything. If the Holy Spirit can't make you live right, then how can Eddie Rawls make you live right? The Lord told me a long time ago, you can only give it to folk. It's up to them whether they do it or whether they receive it. And I'm so grateful and so glad that the Lord gave me a reality check to let me know I'm not greater than the God that sent me. I got to let you do it. I can lead you to the water, but I sure can't make you drink. I can teach holiness, but I can't make you live it. I can try to live as an example of holiness before you, but you're going to have to look at me. But I came out and let you know, if you live long enough, you're going to have to look to somebody. You need to ask God to help me do right about my brothers and sisters. And if it means I got to slow down my progress, it's all right. Because we are running this race. I got a race to run. And I'm running by faith. At the finishing line, I'll see God's face. I came out and let you know we all got to give an account for ourselves. And you got to do right about your brothers and your sisters in the church. Don't be so caught up to become the pastor's pet that you knock everybody else down trying to get there. Don't try to hold rank and position in the church. But I came out and let you know the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Stop trying to prove stuff with people and come on and know that I got to do what's right about God. And if I do what's right about God, I ain't got to cover nothing up. I ain't got to lie about nothing. I can release my excuses and live a life. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, stop deceiving yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because this is what happens when you start moving in deception. See, we wonder where our anointing went to. Mm-hmm. Some of you lost your anointing. When you start lying, covering stuff up, hypocriting, then you begin to lose your anointing. I ain't going to stay right there. Just go to 1 John 3 and 12 right there real quick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. John 
First John 3 and 12. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Uh, I know the word. Good God is good for us. Amen. If we're going to be accountable, that means you look out for somebody besides yourself. Do right for somebody. Amen. But be careful now when you start trying to point some wrongs out in folk. I release it here a bonus back into you when folk try to tell you how wrong you are. You got permission to go at how wrong they are to them too. Or go buy you a compact mirror and keep it in your purse. <laughs> so when they come at you trying to show you you, to, you know, you got a camera on the phone, yeah, you flip that camera around and say, oop, there it is. Marriage 101, you want to do right about your spouse? You do what's right. You can't change your spouse. Everybody went out and made the woman rich with the power of a prevailing wife. And chapter 1 says, don't look at them. Look at yourself first. When you get through looking at yourself, you ain't got time to look at somebody else. <laughs> Read. Read. First John 3 and 12. We should not be like Cain. The Bible said we shall not be like Cain. Read. Who was of the evil one and mm -hmm. murdered his brother. He killed his brother. Y'all killing your brothers and sisters. Killing the children. You say everything bad they do, you can spread that like a hot cake. But you can't spread nothing good they do. I like a child that will expose some stuff. Then you know how to pray. You don't want them to be deceptive like you. We know how to put the, we know how to put some rouge on, some lipstick and some eyeshadow and look good. The kids don't know nothing. The only way they know to be delivered is to tell you what they're really going through. So don't get upset with them. I bind and rebuke. Yeah, you keep binding and rebuke, but live a life so they'll have something to look up to. Stop binding and rebuking and take some time and talk to these children. Minister to their lives. Amen. Don't hide your sin. Go ahead and tell them you used to be that way too. How are we going to be trained? This is accountability calls for transparency. And that means you ain't got to stand before the church like they used to make us stand before the church and, and ask the whole church to forgive us. We got past that point. But sometimes you got to be honest enough with people when you're talking to them. That's when you need to share your testimony. Don't get up here and grab the mic and talk about your new car, new house. Tell them you were homeless. That you came to church on air. And you pray the fumes get you past the church so the folk can't see you run out of gas. Tell them you're borrowing power from your mama. Really, you ain't got to buy power from your mama because you're living with your mama. Come on and tell them. We, we, we sit here and want to paint a pretty picture. Tell the truth. That you don't borrow my clothes. You ain't got nothing new, but you borrowed what I had. And you borrowed it, but you didn't give it back, and you kept it so long, I told you, go ahead and keep it. I don't like people to borrow stuff from me because you act like you got an attitude when I ask for my mess back. So the way to do it is tell you no the first time, then I ain't got to worry about getting it back from you. And stop loaning people stuff you want back. Stop borrowing $5. You know you ain't going to pay that $5 back. Say, can you give me $5? I got to go. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. Most of the folk persecute you because their own deeds are wrong. They do you guilt persecutions. That's the danger of ambition. We got third point. I got to come in. I got to come in. You know, gotta, I go sometime, then I stop it right there. Awesome. 
there. Third, you are displaced in the kingdom. Go back to verses 9 through 15. What, what does that say to you? You become powerless and you lose the power you did have because you took that power to belong to you and it wasn't your power. So vain ambition will cause you to lose what you think you already have. This is a good word to me. And a whole lot of us are struggling because we really need to get it straight. Come on, come on, read, read it, Brian, verse 9. Mm -hmm. The Lord said to Cain, uh -huh. where is Abel, your brother? Uh -huh. Go ahead, he we said, I, go down to 12. Okay. Verse 13, yeah. Yeah. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. Mm -hmm. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. So, so you wonder what happened to it? I used to could sing, I used to could prophesy, I could preach, I could do all this stuff. The problem is, you did wrong. The Bible said, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, so shall they reap. The problem is, you need to go be restored back in some relationship. I try not to make people feel bad when they say, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. But, I, but now I'm seeing, as I study this word more, you got to let people get their self back straight. Because maybe they knew to do better and didn't do better. Maybe I've given you too many excuses when I stand up here and be all cute saying, don't make them all, don't miss them all. And y'all get excited about the pastor said, if you can't make them all, don't miss them all. But it didn't add on. I said, but please try to make more than what you... You, you see, we take the little things and hold on to those things and try to justify some stuff. The pastor said, I know it's okay if you can't pay your 10%. Out, totally go, uh-huh. Yeah, the pastor said it, but the Bible said, bring a 10. The pastor said, at least if you're trying, you ought to try to do better, but some of us still trying. Here we are, nine years later, you still ain't made that list. I done prayed for jobs, promotion, and you know how you get caught? You get the job, you get the promotion, but your money stay the same. And then you wonder, Pastor, pray for me. I'm going through on my job. Yeah, you're going through. Because the devourer has not been rebuked. The devourer, if the devourer is rebuked, that means the devil that's coming up against you will be rebuked if you realize, God, you can't take this job because you know I tie. So, God, your word said you will rebuke the devourer for my sake. So, I need a devourer on my job to be rebuked. Uh-oh. You said you would open a window. I can't even get a peephole. So, God, I need a window open. So, I'm going to give you what's right because your word said prove me on this point. Then your children get jobs. You need to teach them too. Teach your children. Tell them what you get. Where's your paycheck? Now you know what a 10% of that is. And don't let them lie. Tell them what a 10% of it is. Well, you take off your taxes. You take off your retirement. You take off this. You take, when you get through taking off, you ain't paid nothing. <laughs> hmm? So you're teaching them from the beginning how to lie. Read, son. I'm almost finished. Cain said to the Lord, Yes. My punishment is greater than I can bear. What you have said to me is unbearable. Uh huh. Behold, you have driven me today away from the, the Lord. Ground. did not drive him away. Cain's own actions drove him away. A lot of stuff the Lord ain't did, and nobody else has. You did it to yourself. Hmm? Then he got scared. Now, he was big enough to kill his brother, but he was afraid somebody was going to do it back to him. Read. And from your face shall I be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Mm -hmm. And whoever finds me will kill me. This word is good. Read, son. Then the Lord said to him, not so. See, there is a way that God will hold protection over you. But you got to repent. Read, son. If anyone kills Cain... Vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Seven times strong. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, 
lest any who found him should, att should attack him. But well, watch verse 16. This is the part that bothers me. Verse 16. Then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled said, in the land of Nod. He went away from the presence of the Lord. The danger of selfish ambition will cause you to leave from the presence of the Hmm? Amen. One more scripture and I'm coming in. Proverbs 18 and 16. So this is what happened. This is why you can't have ambition because I don't want to just expose you and not tell you what the best thing is. This is why you can't have ambition and I'm getting ready to move forward. Read. There's no need to be ambitious because the word says in Proverbs 18 and 16 that my gift will what? We're so busy trying to look at one thing that we can't see God is making room. Growth is never a bad problem. I, I say we have growing pains. But you got to understand that God is expanding ministry for a reason. Hmm? Your gifts will make... Read. And your gifts will bring you before great people. Hallelujah. I got a call from one of my ministers of music around here um, who said to me, Apostle, you're getting ready to travel, ain't you? I said, yeah, I know. He said, well, count me in. I'm going with you. What, what is that? It's saying to me that you understand that ministry can't remain right where it is. If I can't equip you for ministry, ministry, it, it means if I can't help you, then I'm hindering you. And I don't ever want to be accused of hindering anybody from the gifts of God in operation of their lives. I'm like Bishop Matthews. You look good. I look good. But when you look bad, it's a bad day. Amen. My job is to help you. It's never the, the confession of any teacher to profess how much you didn't know. The job of a teacher is to help you learn what you don't know. Amen. And so if this would be the attitude of the congregation, that maybe I've done it this way before, but it's, I can't say that it's always got to be done the same way. You might have a fresh idea. When we say we need volunteers for something, it's not because we want the same folk to do it. We really mean people to volunteer. Look at these children. I don't want to keep them sitting in here. They got a meeting Wednesday night for anybody to want to work with you. I never worked with you before, but I desire to work with you. Then you show up to the meeting so that we can help you learn what you need to do to work with the children so that you can give something to them. Instead of talking about what the children are doing, do something about it. And know that you got a lot of kids around here, so we need more than one person. There's children here. If I told the church to get up right now, we'd be cleaning a room in this church. And it's going to be worse because they're already planning. When we open up the building, the church is going to start out over there. They ain't even going to start in with us. They're going on about their business. Because they want to make sure that they have opportunity to not only give them the experience of ministry, but teach the kids and listen to the kids to hear what they're going through. We're so busy teaching them, we ain't got time to listen to them. They talking, but we ain't listening. They talking in so many ways. But are we listening? Amen. Well, when I grew up, the children didn't do. Yeah, I understand that was how when you grew up. But see, when you grew up, you didn't have computers. You didn't have cell phones. You didn't have all of that stuff when you grew up. Amen. We didn't have regular phones in the house. And most of us had party lines. Y'all know party lines. If it double ring, it was your house. If it rang one time, it was the little person's house. Y'all remember our party line? That's what we grew up with. But these kids got their own phone. And you can block everything and turn their history. Amen. And these children, these little children, these babies, you give them a cell phone, they know how to go straight to YouTube. Amen. They can download stuff and don't know your code. So, then you got to know how to go look through the history to see what they've been looking at. 
Everything on YouTube ain't good. So, so know the history. All right, I'm, I'm coming in right here, right here. So if we're going to be effective, know that your gifts will make room for you. Amen. Amen. So how do I do it? I need to go to true repentance. I need to just really own up about it. Man up, woman up, and make a turn. I'm going to turn from this. I'm going to change. That maybe I've been going about it the wrong way. And I need to realize that all of us are God's gift. And your gift is no greater. You may, you may have gotten more things because you've been faithful over a few things. But it still don't mean you're any greater than the other person. Amen. Okay, how rich, rich people live. When they die, they can't take it with them. They still digging out those Pharaoh's tombs and all that stuff and getting their artifacts. Amen. Some of it survive and some of it don't survive. So we really got to be, we got to really live the right kind of life to be effective. Amen. All right, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. The word of God. Amen. Amen. Can we rest on our feet right now? Amen. If you're here today and amen, you're not saved, we want to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Is there one today? Is there one today? Amen. Amen. On last Sunday, I heard somebody who said I needed to open the doors of the church. and Amen. But I opened the doors of my office. And they came in. Amen. And so we're grateful. Amen. Is there one today? The one. Amen. 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 Can we pray? God, we thank you. God, we honor you for your people, for all that you are to your people. We give you praise for what you have done for us, even for what we've experienced, even in your presence today. We want to say thank you. Thank you for those who are gathered here, God. We pray that we would be thin of our ways, that we would come with the right spirit and do the things that you need us to do, oh God. God, help us to be a church family indeed, who love one another, who remembers that it's you who've given us the ability to have the things we have and to do the things that we do. Thank you for every gift you've sent to the work of this ministry. We don't take them for granted, and we simply say we honor you for that. So, God, I pray as Paul prayed for Timothy that you would stir up your gifts in all of us, that we would be what you would have us to be. Even through this week, God, many are going through challenges. Some the doctors are testing. Some the doctors have tested, and they're awaiting results. Some, God, have gone through some treatments, and some are anticipating treatments. But we trust you, God, to be able to do anything but fail. We thank you for the, your report, which says we are healed, we are filled, and we have your victory. God, thank you for that today, and we pray your continued blessings now, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you be seated for a moment, we're going to lift our offering. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Tawana. Is she here? Amen. Amen. Come on with the announcements real quickly. Amen. Did you get Brother Carlton's information? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I have just a few announcements that I wanted to share with you. I'm sorry, guys. My son, I'm sorry, Pastor. You know I'm slow. My son is just majestic. Um, youth leaders um, and those interested in working with youth, youth ministry, please meet in Kid Zone on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Um, for a very important meeting. Um, Bible study will resume on this Wednesday at 7 p.m. And mark your calendar on June the 1st. 
um, at 4 p.m. Apostle Rawls and Music Ministry will minister at New Vision Church in Dunn, and this is to celebrate six years being cancer-free for Apostle June Douglas, so we thank God in advance for that. Um, attention all JOCO project participants and parents, please see Elder Marvin Rawls immediately after worship to complete some additional paperwork. Um, this includes any adults interested in building wheelchair ramps and other projects at three various locations within the area. Market calendar on June the 9th um, from 1 to about 3, 3.30 p.m. Um, the Pentecost Fellowship will be at Wilson Mills Christian Church. All members are asked to wear red and children wear something suitable as um, there will be water, games, and make sure you bring towels as well. So we need to turn in a head count for that event. I believe there's a list at the Welcome Center if you're interested. Um, so we're gonna be responsible for um, the meats, the cheese, and the bread. Um, so if you're interested in helping, please see um, Sister Maddie Dorsett. And again, um, check out the list at the Welcome Center. Make sure you sign up for that. Mark your calendar, the first annual Holy Gathering is scheduled for June 26th through the 30th. Um, so it's going to be Wednesday through Friday, um, times is at 7.30 p.m., Saturday at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., and then on Sunday at 10 a.m. So more details will follow, but please, ma'am, please, sir, um, join us in that event and make sure you bring family and friends with you as well. And I believe at our Welcome Center, um, we may have um, some over-the-counter medication, so just stop by and check that out as well. And also to the MRW um, financial program um, that is sponsored um, throughout the area, uh, Mr. Carlton is, is our contact person for that. They are having a uh, workshop, and that's going to be the first Saturday in June, Mr. Carlton, is that correct? Okay, so and I believe the program will, carry, uh, will cover credit, financial stability, um, uh, debt resolution and, and some other topics as well and I believe that it will be in Raleigh but again please see Mr. Carlton Mr. Mr. Carlton can you wave for him or stand up so they'll know who you are so any questions on that please see Mr. Carlton <laughs> um, also mark your calendar the ninth pastoral anniversary for um, Pastor Tony McLaurin at Peace Memorial will be on Sunday June the 2nd and they do have an afternoon program at 3 p.m. Reverend Har Harry G, G will actually be there for that event. And Dr. G is from, as we all know, from Rex, North Carolina. All right. Um, I would like to say congratulations. I'd like to say congratulations to my little buddy here, little Mojo. She made the AB honor roll, and she was promoted to the sixth grade. <laughs> And congratulations to our little fast runner here, Brother Isaiah Harris, for competing on the state level for track and field. We're so proud of you, young man. Great job. <laughs> and congratulations to my son as well, who was selected as the um, student body president for Clayton Senior High for the upcoming school year 2019-2020. <laughs> elected. Elected. Thank you, Pastor, for correcting me on that. <laughs> and he also received several other leadership awards. And thank you, um, Nisha, for coming out to support that event. And Nisha and I were looking at each other because um, a military official got up there, and you know, I kind of zoned out when he got up there. I was like, okay, this is for kids going into service or whatever. And he, you know, started mentioning service award and leadership. And then he called Chris. I'm like. I looked at Denise, she was like, has he even talked to the military? He didn't even tell me. But they gave him a leadership award, so I was so proud of him for that as well. So, But um, we thank, we're very thankful and proud of our, all of our kids that are here. And so I believe there is some, um, we're going to plan to um, acknowledge the kids and for their academic success as well. So that concludes what I have for you. Please govern yourselves accordingly. I want to emphasize the financial planning workshop that Brother Carlton has this Saturday. Um, for those of us that are interested in some things, Brother Carlton is one of our cheerleaders of the debt-free 
uh, business entrepreneurs and those types of things. So please see him about that. I think it might bless you. For those of us that are struggling day to day and need to know some information, it's always good to gather a wealth of information and find out some things you want to do. So uh, we support that. We got several businesses here. I believe the Lord has anointed this ministry for people with business and entrepreneurship and many things. I was in a restaurant last Saturday and I looked down on the table. There was a car for D.B. Hardy where she's advertising voice coach, vocal lessons, and services available as a soprano in many events and venues. And I thank God for how she's been able to go to school, graduate, and come back home and then offer those services. I also would like to give it up for the Tigerettes. Is that the name they use? What's the name of the group? Unique, Unique Tigerettes. Yesterday they had their, their first um, dance show, and those people were bad. They had folk from all over Eastern North Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina, who were competing. They had a drum line. They had a whole lot of stuff going on at the school. And I'm telling you, I was proud to see our little girls out there and see the things that they were able to do. So we wanted to give, give this, um, a shout out to them. Um, and I think them Tiger Reds is tigered out today because I don't see them where they at. <laughs> all right, stand up Tiger Reds so we know who you are. All right. Come on, Octavia, one of their coaches. All right, all right, all right, take it. All right, come on, come on, Brother Marvin, because I need to do communion right hand of fellowship. Come on. Can, can, I know y'all are waiting on something. I'm coming. Um, I said I was doing a list of things we might need for the building, and I have several people who are supposed to be giving me quotes, but it's becoming more difficult now to kind of sit certain things out. Um, I have a family that are donating the commodes for the room, the building. Um, the sinks have to be built because they have to be handicapped accessible where you can roll a wheelchair under them. And to buy the ones I've seen, they're pricey enough that it's better for me to let the man order the granite for the top and then build the bottom of it. So those are some things that are holding me up from giving you an answer of what a door costs. I can tell you this, all the doors in that building for inside, for the um, class, the, not the, um, ba the bathroom, the partitions, the offices, not many offices, but the storage areas and the kitchen and all of those, all those doors, hardware panic, because everything has to be um, American Disability Act compliant, and everything has to be safe because we are using it for our children, so you want to have it ready. I can tell you that total bill is $10,000. I can tell you that the chandeliers and the lights for the bathroom and the bathroom, just, just the simple lights for that and the chandelier for the foyer, those lights are $2,500. I can give you that figure. I can tell you that the drop ceiling that's going in the kitchen and in the foyer and in the office, one office and the storage area, those drop ceilings, the total cost of that is $3,000. That don't include labor to put it in. So you understand what I'm saying? The, the ceiling has been painted. So at some point, I just ask you to continue to dig deeper. We're moving forward. Um, we still owe about 23000 to the heating and air and the electrician for the finished job. They've been paid up to that point. But both of them have been paid $25,000. Y'all have done well. So I mean, but the numbers continue to be there. So. Um, I would say that anything you give towards the project helps it work. And if you know a deep pocket I need to see, I'll go see the deep pocket. But um, we're moving ahead. Um, the plumber is finishing up his rough end. Then once the plumber finishes his rough end, it's our intention to go ahead and get all the doors and stuff to get them in. But to get the doors in, then I'm going and tapping into something else so I can go ahead and get that stuff so while the people are working, they'll get the bulk of the work done. I didn't say anything about the flooring or the furnishing. The flooring, I asked them to give me a price by yard, but they sent three people to quote us because we're not considered a big job, so they kind of messing over me a little bit. So I just want you to know that it's not for me not working. I spent a whole day last week just doing nothing but running from store to store, place to place, trying to deal with that project. But it's coming, okay? So y'all keep praying. Keep praying that God opened that window. I need open. I need a window open. I need a window about 50,000 opened up, and I trust God to do it. So, Y'all continue to pray, um, but we're moving ahead. If I pray that if we work it like we need to work it, we'll be able to have a big, happy new G birthday party there the fourth Saturday in August. Y'all keep praying. So I'm putting a demand in the kingdom that I need a kingdom release 
to be able to do what we need to do. Amen? So y'all keep praying for me. Kingdom release. Kingdom release. Because I believe if you don't have it, pray that God would touch the heart of somebody that does to be able to do what we need to do to make it work. Amen? So we're going to make it work. Thank you. Come on, son. So first Sunday, next Sunday, we want to take a special building fund offering up. Amen. Can we give it up for our apostle, Apostle Addie? Come on, we can do better than that for our apostle, Apostle Addie M. Harris Rawls. And we are grateful for her. Amen. Some of y'all are like, Lord, look at all that money we need. Look at your neighbor say, it's in the house. Amen. And every God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. Anybody believe that it's going to happen? Amen. We're going to be in there by the fourth Saturday in August. Anybody believe this going to happen? So in other words, how are we going to get there? God's get ready to bless God's people so we can sow into what we need to do with the bad. Anybody believe God's going to bless you to write a big check to help with that building? Anybody believe by faith and say, I can prophesy over my own finances that God is getting ready to bless me beyond what I thought it was? Anybody believe that there's a blessing that's getting ready to overtake me so big that I can just write the check for it? Look at your neighbor saying, blessing are on my way. Blessing are on my way. What you mean by it's on my way? That means blessings is already on it. So it's getting ready to just fall on your way. You don't have to look for it. It's getting ready to walk right into you it is on your way the blessing that you need God to do amen I just wanted to prophesy that because I know it's getting ready to happen look at your neighbor tell him it's getting ready to happen the blessings of the Lord is getting ready to just overtake you and it's not going to add no sorrow to it amen you ain't going to be shameful for the blessing that God's got in store for you put those hands together if you believe that is for you on today hallelujah we bless God for that Amen. Get your best gift. Do me a favor. I had to grab my wallet because I only do it when the Lord tell me. Open up your wallets and your pocketbook and just tell God thank you for what you're dropping in here now. I only do it when the Holy Ghost tell me to do it. If you really believe by faith, some of y'all ain't going to believe it. Some of y'all been playing lottery tickets and it ain't going to happen that way. So I'm just telling you, I'm opening up my wallet and say, God, I ain't got to do what the wicked do to get my wealth. But I decree and declare, it's getting ready to just fall up in my wallet in Jesus' name. Amen. And tell your neighbor, don't hate on me. Amen. Don't hate on me. Amen. Amen. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. But it did not say the, the righteous got to act like the wicked to get the wealth. Everybody keep talking about I'm going to get a lottery ticket. Now, I understand God will talk to you in dreams. I've heard a couple people tell me God will give you lottery ticket numbers in a dream. But I'm not going to play the lottery because I trust God that God's going to connect me with somebody that's going to play it and know they're going to give me the money to help my church. ain't got to lose my religion to do something to get some money. But I got faith to know that I'm going to hook up with the right person. They said, what you need? Here's the chat. All right. Y'all catch that on your way home. you catch it on your way home. Hallelujah. I believe God is in the blessing business. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Tell them God is in the blessing business. God is in the blessing business. Money's just going to fall on top of you because God is in the blessing business. And we're yet grateful about that. Amen. Amen. Anybody believe my blessing is coming this week? Anybody truly believe my blessing is coming this week? Hallelujah. Don't hate on me because I just, I had to tell God I know it's me. Why are everybody trying to fake and act like you don't need a blessing? But I decree and declare that this is my week full of blessing. It's full of blessing. Oh my God. your opportunity to go ahead and put a praise on us. Hallelujah. We get ready to give. Oh my God.
we're going to move forward in Jesus' name. All right, count me down. Five, four, three, two, one. Amen. Clap your hands like you believe it's already done. Hallelujah. God is truly in the blessing business. Listen, I'm going to tell my own business. I got to clean my room at home because my daddy keep fussing at me for cleaning my room. And uh, I was cleaning my room the other day and I was going through some old papers. And uh, I was looking and I said, let me get rid of some of this trash. I'm tired of keeping all this stuff. And I was going through some old cards. You know how you get birthday cards, graduation cards, and all those kind of cards? So I was going through them and I said, let me just go through them. And all of a sudden, I saw one that was in an envelope. I said, Okay, what's in here? And I opened the car, want nothing in it, but I opened the flap of the car and there was some money hidden in the car. Can I tell you something? There's some blessings that have been stored up for you. That has been, it was given to me four years ago. If I would have found that money four years ago, I would have spent it. But God knew that was the season I needed a four years ago blessing. Can I just prophesy over you that some of you have some held up money in your life from years past? Can I prophesy unto you that God is getting ready to release that money unto you because you had you needed it a while back ago. But God said, I'm about to show you how mighty I am unto you. And you get ready to open up some sort of blessing and it's getting ready to bless your life. Thus says the Spirit of the Lord. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor, neighbor. Neighbor, oh neighbor. Neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. There's blessings stored up for you that's about to be released. There's some blessings stored up for you that's about to be released. because we got to do communion on today. Hallelujah. Get your best gift. Get your gift, gift. Get your best gift that you're going to bring and signify by standing as you're about to stand into some money. Amen. Signify by standing. You're about to stand into some money. Father, we believe that blessings with our name on it we get ready to come into contact with God and we thank you for the blessing of the Lord is getting ready to overtake us so much we're going to need some more room to receive the blessing that you have for me God it's my prayer that you will bless us that you will open up the windows of heaven and shower down blessings that we won't have enough room to receive. But God, we're going to make some room because we're going to press it down and we're going to shake it together for we know that our running over blessing is on its way. God, we thank you for every giver, every person that desires to give. God, bless us all and receive these gifts we have for you today. For all things come from you, O oh Lord, and of thine own. We're giving back to you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on and just bring your gifts. Bring your gifts. Hallelujah. Just bring your gifts this morning. Hallelujah.
May we stand. May we stand. All things coming from thee, O Lord, and of thine own, we give it back to you. if all the parents will get with your children we're getting ready to enter our communion service so we ask that we will sit in silence as we prepare for our communion to come under Amen. what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I am singing Amen. We ask that the deaconess please come forward. Amen. To help serve with the communion table. Amen. to come together around this table as those who belong to the household of Christ, brothers and sisters who are baptized, who in our baptized lives live out the death and resurrection of Jesus, the family of the reborn and the reconciled, who inhabit a universe of grace. At this time, as
as we reflect back at the Lord's table, put yourself in that place. Put yourself in the conversation as you reflect back as him hanging on the cross, the blood that he shed for our sins. Reflect back on that day and what he has done for you. This is a personal conviction on today. Not anyone else, but personal. Your own personal one. And at this time, we will have our prayer of forgiveness by Minister Tracy. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, God, asking you right now, God, if we did anything that is unpleasing in your sight, to forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, and we ask as we partake in this communion that each individual examine themselves, Father God, with their, re their relationship they have with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we will have the prayer of the elements for evangelist Everett. Let us pray. Father, we thank thee, O oh God, for these, your elements. Lord, for your body that was broken for us. Lord, for your blood that was shed for us. That, God, as we partake of these, O oh God, that as often as we do it, Lord, what we would do it in remembrance of thee. That, God, that when we partake, Father, we take it knowing that we have not an alt against our brother or our sister so that we do not eat, neither do we drink damnation to our soul. But we thank you for the blessing of these elements of the bread and the wine for Holy Communion. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we welcome all because the table is big and it has room for all of us at this time, for all of those that would like to partake.
Jesus Christ. Receive the body, the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Receive the body, the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Receive the body of our Lord to see the body, the blood of our Lord, save Jesus Christ. Receive the body, the blood of our Lord, and save Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
While we're preparing now, we're going to receive Brother Terrence Cole. We're going to receive Brother and Sister Gilmore, Elder Nikki, <laughs> Brother Demetrius. Come on up. Sister Sharon and Nola. Hey, Zola. You're going to get me, Zola, right, baby? Yeah, Zola and Sister Sh Elder Sharon. Amen. Come on up here. Amen. Any I neglected, now I hate doing this because we should keep up with it better than that. Everybody else said the right hand. Because I don't want to leave anybody. Don't sit there and say, Pastor, you forgot me. Come on, Sister Hazel. I think you joined since we did the right hand. Did we give you the right hand yet? No. Come on, baby. Amen. All right. Have I covered everybody? Y'all bear with me for a minute. That's why we didn't shake hands in between communion. Amen. But I want to say in the life of this ministry, God has blessed us to have these fine people. I got some papers over there, so I'll make sure I call the names right. Amen. I sent for them. Yes, put them in my basket. Amen. 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 Victoria, you coming in with your husband? Come on, baby. Amen. I don't want to get in trouble with that because folks say they get that confused now. So, Victoria, you coming up with him? That's all right. And then Jonathan. Amen. Amen. I ain't trying to make a difference. Go on the other side of your husband. Amen. 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 In the life of this church, we have today, amen, Sister Hazel Gully, who has reunited with this church, amen. We have Brother Demetrius Gilmore and his wife, Elder Sh Sharon, we call, wait a minute, Elder Nikki, Sh yeah, that's the name I'm going with, Elder Nikki Gilmore, amen. We have uh, Prophetess Sharon Carter and her baby, um, Zola, amen. We have Brother Terrence Cole, his wife, Victoria, and his son, Jonathan. Anybody else? Anybody want to come? The water is trouble. Yes, sir. This is an exciting time in the work of this ministry. That God has caused these people to unite with us in this work. Amen. And some come ready to work. They say, Pastor, I'm ready to go to work. Amen. Amen. So we receive them in the faith of God here. Amen. Brother Terrence was baptized this morning. They were the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Elder Apostle Gathers, you're going to present his certificate to him. I present this uh, certificate of baptism for Terrence Cole. Say he was baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit on the 26th day of May. 2019 at New Generation Christian Church of Smithfield, North Carolina. Pastor Eddie Rawls, Pastor uh, Anthony Wobbler, Sherman Deacon. Bless you. All right, we're going to start it out. The rest is going to finish. Amen. When you get through with the right hand of fellowship, we love y'all. It's 1, 12, 40, and I'm in trouble. So we pray now. Can everybody bow their heads? And then we're going to shake their hands. But God, we thank you for those who have caused the unite to this ministry. We thank you for all you have done in our presence today. And we pray now that the grace of God and sweet communion of his spirit will rest rule and abide with us now forevermore. Thank you again, God, for blessing this ministry. In Jesus' name, amen.
Attending the Joko Project. Please see myself before you leave on today. Thank you. <laughs> 